have a look at this stunner. In the world of cacti and succulents, there are probably few plants quite so beautiful as those coralesque wonders you can see on the screen. But what exactly are they? Well, they're called crests, and they grow with a beautiful, intricate, fan-like shape. And today, we're gonna to be exploring everything that you wanna know about crested plants. What are they? Where do they come from? Can we induce cresting in our own plants? And many more questions are answered in today's episode of Aridzine, so stick around while we explore what may be one of the more beautiful and also bizarre growth forms of any of the cacti and succulents. So I thought it might be interesting as I go through this world of crests, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna share with you some of my favorite crested plants that I have in my collection. And why don't we start with this one? It may well be, in my opinion, the most beautiful of all the crests that I own. I grew this from seed. It's a Scopulicola hybrid crossed with a Trichocereus peruvianus. And the reason that I think it's so beautiful is just that almost sculptural, slow emergence of the crest. And look at it from above. You can see that long growing point, which is indicative of a crest, because what they are is a mutation to the growing point. Now, when we look at any typical cactus, here's one, we will see that cacti grow from a singular point at the very top of the plant, typically. The scientific name for that growth point is the apical meristem. And what happens ordinarily is that point continues to grow taller and taller, but in a crested plant, for a whole variety of different reasons, could be damage, could be mutation, we'll explore that shortly. Rather than just growing from a singular point, the apical meristem starts to grow in a line shape, in a horizontal way. And so rather than growing up, the plant starts to fan outwards. And depending on the species, depending on the growth form, you can start getting some truly beautiful and surprising shapes, just like this one. And I think the thing that's so wonderful about crests in a way is the sheer variety. This plant here is the same hybrid, but you can see when you compare it with this guy, very different growth forms. Whereas this one is slowly fanning out in an almost vertical fashion, this one has a more textured, more variable, slow, almost mutant kind of shape happening. It's uh, really quite unique. And for that reason, I love this plant almost as much as that one. It's a real stunner. It's just that almost spineless character that I find really quite beautiful about these two plants. And that's the Trichocereus scopulicola coming through genetically. Now with both of these plants, you can see the crest is growing somewhat uninterrupted. But when you have horizontal growth, inevitably what's gonna happen is that those growth will start to bump into each other. What does that look like? Let's take a look, shall we? Here it is, when the fan gets wide enough, they start twisting and turning and coiling back in on themselves. And you get this amazing, almost brain-like texture. It's really something remarkable. And as a result, there are many species of cacti that have been introduced into cultivation that are crested that go by the name the brain cactus. In fact, the very first cactus that I ever owned, sadly long since departed, was a Mammillaria elongata cristata sold in a pot that looked like a skull, like a brain coming out the top of it. Really fantastic. Appealed to my tastes anyway. But that twisty, turny growth form, I think makes them incredibly unique. And that's why these plants are surprisingly collectible. But can we just make them ourselves? To answer that question, we have to understand what causes crested growth. And there's actually a whole variety of different reasons that plants might crest. The first of those is genetic mutation. All of those trichocereus that I just shared with you, I grew them from seed and they were genetically predisposed to grow in a crested form because they had crested parents or at least monstrous parents. That means kind of mutant growth forms. 
All I needed to do was sow the seeds and they grew up that way. However, crests can also be induced by damage to that growth point, that apical meristem. Now, that's not to say that a damaged growth point will automatically result in a crest. I can show you, for example, this Euphorbia obesa here. One day I came out and I found a snail eating the very top of the plant. And you can see what happened. It stopped growing at the top and now it's just shooting out pups. And that's the typical result of a damaged growth point. However, sometimes, very occasionally, and science doesn't yet know why precisely, but a damaged growth point can result in a crest. Here is a different Euphorbia obesa. Now, I'm not precisely sure what happened to the growth point here. Wasn't monitoring it closely enough, never saw anything chewing on it. But if you look closely, what you can see is the beginning of crested growth. Didn't come from crested parentage. No, this is a plant that has, I suppose, responded to its environmental conditions and just felt that way. It's only in the very early stages and this may actually cease growing in this way. It might end up growing dichotomous. What that means is just growing two heads out of the one body. But if I'm lucky, in time, this guy here, you can see very clearly that horizontal growth point. In time, this is going to be a delightfully twisty, turny Euphorbia obesa growing very differently to their ordinary form. Now that idea that these plants can be genetic or induced from environmental factors probably answers the next question. Do you find crests in nature? The answer, of course, is yes. There are some fantastic examples of crested cacti and succulents growing out in habitat. I've seen many photos online of both crested saguaro cactuses, your big Carnegie giganteas out in the American Southwest, as well as perhaps more fantastically, crested peyote plants, Lophophora williamsii. In fact, peyotes in particular seem quite particularly predisposed towards cresting. They're quite common in cultivation as well as, I believe, in the wild. At least the number of photos I see of them in the wild cresting suggests that's the case anyway. And so yes, fantastic cultivation plants they're not only in our collections, they grow exactly like that out in the wild too. And I interrupt this exciting broadcast just to remind you about the cool Aridzine merch. Got a whole bunch of jumpers, cool t-shirts like this one, the Scary Cactus t-shirt. Check it out, the link's on the screen. Really appreciate the support if you do go in there and buy something. Anyway, let's get back into the world of crests. Now, Crested plants are often spoken in the same breath as monstrose plants. And if you're not aware, a monstrose plant is essentially a mutant, something that grows in an atypical way, not necessarily a crest per se, but something that grows very different to its ordinary form. This here, for example, is a monstrose form of a plant called Eulichnia castanea. Now, Eulichnia castanea is a fairly unremarkable species of cacti, low growing, spiny thing. But at some point in cultivation, one of them was grown that had this amazing, twisty, turny, almost ringlet growing growth. And this has, as a result, been named Eulichnia castanea varispiralis because that varispiralis name is reflective of the fact that there are different forms. And so like this one, you have these almost stacked rings on top of each other but there is a crested form as well because crests and monstrosity often go hand in hand. Let me show you what this looks like when it's grown as a crest. And so you can see side by side, there are similar growth patterns, that same kind of spines emerging from lines on the plant. But whereas this one has an ordinary apical meristem and grows vertically, this one has a predisposition to growing ever wider and it takes that fan shape. It's fantastic, but it's not the only example of a monstrose plant that has at some point decided to go crested. One of the most famous of all the monstrose plants in cultivation is a plant called Trichocereus 
Brugesii monstrosus, TBM for short. And it's got a nickname, it's called the penis plant, because when you look at it, for very obvious reasons, you can see why. Looks like a whole bunch of dicks stacked on top of each other. Now, that is a plant that has also at some point in cultivation gone crested. And this is what it looks like. Nothing at all like that original stacked phallic form. Still has the nasty spines, but now, as you can see, growing in a beautiful and, I would say, fairly bizarre and mutant growth shape. Fantastic. And this will just continue to grow ever further outwards. It's those bizarre and wondrous growth forms that, to me, makes these appealing. And I'm not alone. Often you're going to find that crested plants are far more desired by particular collectors who really, I suppose, share in the wonderment and joy of these very unique shapes because they never quite grow the same. Now, crests and monstrosity go hand in hand, but what about variegation? Can you get variegated crests? Well, the answer to that question is absolutely. Get a load of this guy. I've shared this plant on this channel before. This is a plant called Trichocereus Dr. Funkenstein, and it's what's called a bicolored crest. Bicolored as in two colored, as in the crested parts, one side is green, one side is yellow. Really amazing, fantastic Trichocereus hybrid. But these plants are also indicative of perhaps one of the most challenging aspects of growing a crest. Because what you'll find is that many crests, not all of them, but many, have a predisposition to reversion. And what I mean by reversion is they want to go back to just being tall columns. They don't want to keep growing like a fan. For example, when I first got this plant, it had a whole bunch of what looked like fingers emerging from the top and I chopped them all off. These are reversions. You can see that bi-coloured colouring. Just imagine that sticking out the top, about five or six of them. So if you want to maintain a crest, often what you need to do is chop those reversions off because almost always the plant will pour the majority of its energy into that vertical growth and the crest will kind of stagnate. Remove the reversions and you can continue to promote that crested wave-like emergence. Unfortunately, Dr. Funkenstein is a crest that has a real desire to throw reversions. And so I reckon every year I'm just gonna be chopping column after column after column off the thing to try and keep that original shape. But hey, it's a sacrifice we make for growing beautiful plants, hey? Here's another really cool little Trichocereus hybrid crest. And I do like this plant. I think the spiny nature of it maybe makes it a little bit less beautiful. But the reason I wanna share it with you is because it reveals, I suppose, a surprising aspect of crested plants. Ordinarily, we think of the crest as being in the plant body, and that's true most of the time. But fascinatingly, crests can appear in almost any part of the plant. I've seen examples of crested flowers. I've also seen, as in this plant, crested roots. Have a look in there. We've had a very wet, humid winter, and as a result, a lot of these trichocereus plants have been throwing aerial roots, just responding to humidity. And this one, growing out of the middle of the crest, has thrown a crested aerial root. Fascinating, right? Really kind of bizarre. Now, I'm probably going to snip that off at some point just for aesthetic purposes, but I thought it was a really interesting illustration to show how any part of these plants can actually grow crested. Now, talking about genetic predisposition towards cresting, I can actually show you some examples of tiny baby seedlings that are just emerging now into their crested shape already at this very young age. These plants here are probably only about six months old. You can see the merry stem starting to go horizontal. And when they start putting on a bit of growth, they'll be noticeably growing wider than they'd grow taller. It's gonna be quite fascinating to watch these guys go. Give them a year or two, and they'll look something like this. Now, you'll have to excuse the fact this plant is stressed 
to buggery. It's got that red coloring because I haven't watered it all winter long. Probably could have done with it, but it'll be fine. It'll green up in spring. But you can see that crested growth form here in a plant that's probably about one year old. And that will just continue to proliferate and expand over time as it gets older and older. It's gonna be a really fascinating and interesting process to watch because the joy of crests is you never quite know what they're gonna do next. Now, is it just primarily cacti that grow with this crested form? The answer is absolutely not. In fact, surprisingly, many different succulents are predisposed to growing with this crested shape. I've shown you the Euphorbia obesa and there are other crested euphorbias commonly found in cultivation. Euphorbia lactea and its variegated form white ghost may be the most common crested plants in all of cultivation. But then there are others too. You've got, for example, a plant known as the mermaid's tail succulent. It's a senesio, senesio talanoides, which looks like just kind of these little chalk sticks sticking up, but with that crested form has been nicknamed the mermaid's tail for obvious reasons. You can get crested pachypodiums. There's some really beautiful crested pachypodium lamerii out there in the world, and even crested cycads. One of the most interesting things I've seen, and I wish I could go and find it again, was an Australian grass tree growing not far from where I live that had a crested flower spike. Really very bizarre and nothing like anything I've ever seen before. I thought I'd finish up sharing with you one final beautiful example of a crested plant and it's a great time of year to share this with you here in Sydney's winter. This is a plant called Motilocactus geometrizans elite crest. Now your typical Motilocactus kind of grows with a bunch of blue columns, really beautiful plants in their own right. The elite crest however as you can see grows with a very tight crested form. But that's not the thing that I think makes this the most beautiful thing. It's the winter stress colors. You can see all along that growth point, when temperatures cool down, the plant goes a beautiful, delicate orange, almost red color. And that contrast between the bluey green growth and the orangey crest makes this one a real winter delight and well worth growing relatively common these days in cultivation as well. So could well be worth seeking it out and adding it to your own collection. Anyway, that's crests for you. Amazing plants, really bizarre, quite unique, and typically, in my opinion, absolutely beautiful and well worth growing. I hope you've learned something, I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you've got experience with crests, chuck them into the comments. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm Michael, this is Aridzine. I'll see you next Monday.